What does wealth mean to you? Is it based on monetary value or your well-being? And how do you measure it? Viktor Frankl, who in his book, Man's Search for Meaning, mentions research from John Hopkins University. Asked, when considered, what was important to them, the participants, 16% of them, said it was to make a lot of money. 78% said their first goal was finding meaning and a purposeful life. I must say, I was very encouraged indeed. A purposeful life means different things to different people. And it's about knowing your why. I recently took part in the seven levels deep exercise. And this has given me so much clarity on my strengths, my passion, and my purpose. Thinking on this, only a small population in the world achieve financial wealth. And the same is for mental wealth. I have worked in mental health services for over 22 years. I have experienced a lot, and I've also learned so much. Global suicide is at an all-time high. According to the World Health Organization, 800,000 people die by suicide every year. That's one person every 40 seconds. The same amount of time it takes to write and send a short message or pay a bill online. The World Health Organization also states that 204 64 million people are impacted by depression. People of all ages are impacted. Your health is truly your wealth, and this includes your mental health. I would say even more so. You and you alone are responsible for your mental health and well-being. And we all have the ability to achieve mental wealth if we truly invest in ourselves. I believe it's not good enough to just survive with our mental health. We should thrive with our mental wealth. Mental wealth is that higher level of mental well-being that allows us to achieve our potential, find our passion and our purpose, build resilience to allow us to overcome anything that we are faced with. In Maslow's theory, we are all aiming or moving towards self-actualization which is the way of the part of Maslow's hierarchy of needs, with everything below having to be achieved before we accomplish self-actualization, which is a psychological state of presence, self-acceptance, self-expression, and authenticity. This can be achieved when you invest in yourself. Think of your mental state as your house. You build it bit by bit. You've got good days and bad days. You know what you need to do to build it. And good, setting good foundations is key. The foundations of your well-being are in what you practice on a daily basis. The five ways to well-being are an essential part of this. Connect, learn, give, take notice, and keep physically active. If you implement these, the Public Health Agency states that this will keep you well, safe, and hopefully free from harm in your home. However, this does not make you wealthy. It is what you invest in outside of your home that creates wealth. The same applies for your mental wealth. It is an everyday practices in addition to meeting your basic needs that contribute to this. Set your goals and your intentions. Develop a plan to action them. Meditation, affirmations, gratitude, raising your energy and your vibration. As you deposit money into the bank and let it accumulate and withdraw when you need it, the same applies for your mindset. So as with keeping your house in order, you also need to deposit these into a mindset bank when you can draw on them when you need to. Especially if you have lack of motivation, adversity in your life, or are hit by the hard knocks of life, and we've all had to deal with them. I've known 
times in my life when I have felt adversity, when I have felt grief, loneliness, and pain. And it was in my daily practices that I found strength, courage, and resilience, meaning that I did not dip as far as I potentially could have because I have achieved mental wealth. Affirmations, discipline in our thoughts, creating a healthy mindset are all important factors. The four agreements are included in all of this. Be impeccable with your word. Do not take anything personally. Do not make assumptions. And always do your best. These raise your level of mindset, adding to your mental wealth. You do not have to achieve this alone, however. To activate mental wealth is to recognize and create a support system around you. I personally am part of an amazing mastermind and also a coaching group of ladies. I invest in myself in all aspects of my life, physically, mentally, spiritually, and emotionally. Everything is connected. In Napoleon Hill's book, Think and Grow Rich, he states, your body achieves what the mind believes it can. This is paramount. We need to start with our mind as it all comes from within. So, who are your five? It's worth taking a moment to consider this. It is an integral part of creating mental wealth. Your five gold bars. Swam, if you like. Someone to support you in your spiritual journey, your well-being, ambition with your business, someone who keeps you accountable and also supportive with your mindset and motivation. In conclusion, implementing all of these practices in your life will enrich you far more than any amount of money can. Know your five goal bars and it's equally as important to be part of somebody's five. Open your mindset bank and deposit more than you will ever need to withdraw to maintain optimum well-being. Build a stable foundation and invest in your assets. Invest in your mental wealth. Don't just strive for mental health and well-being. Thrive for mental wealth.